Greetings, comrades. So, you guys know I, or even if you don't know, uh, now you will. A few days ago, I made a video, a very long and rambling video, about different ways you can set up your AR 15 to do different things. So, of course, the obligatory thing <clears throat> to do was to do one about AKs. Fortunately for you, this one will be much shorter, much simpler, because an AK is, uh, well, it's good at only a few things. And then those things it's good at, it does very, very well. But uh, there's really less options when it comes to an AK as far as making it do all kinds of other things. But that's not to say you can't make it do lots of things. It's a, it's a good rifle all around. Um, what's different about the AK to the AR in a more in a basic terms is <clears throat> what it was designed to do first. America has a long history of riflemen, people shooting. It's, of course, one of the few countries that's active uh, in its promotion of firearms, firearm safety, and it's a right. And we consider it a right for all people, though really it only exists in the States and a few other countries, to have one. The AK, of course, was designed under uh, Mikhail Kalishnikov and the committee, uh, Soviet Armament Committee. He, Mikhail Kalishnikov was not the only designer of it, although he likes to pretend he was. Um, and was basically created from lessons the Soviet Union learned <clears throat> after uh, World War II. And uh, if you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with this, the uh, STG-44 Sturm Gewehr and uh, its influence on modern uh, firearms. And of course, the AK-47 was patterned after the Sturm Gewehr uh, and uh, a few other guns. Basically, it's the, uh, <clears throat> the Sturm Gewehr, the SVT-40, the SKS, um, couple of, and a couple of other ideas thrown together and uh, given to uh, a very frightened Hugo Schmeiser who was captured by the Russians and he came up with a design and then uh, him and Mikhail Kalishnikov came up with another design that was basically his design simplified and Russianized to deal with the harsher Russian conditions and uh, they came up with what we now have as the AK-47. Mikhail Kalishnikov did a lot of work on it but uh, his prototype is very very different from what uh, the AK-47 is externally. I thought to dissuade him, he, he's still an excellent engineer, but he should not get all the credit for designing the AK-47. And uh, most people who aren't AK fanboys know this. The thing is, is Mikhail Kalishnikov is paid a lot of money by the Russian government now and by the old Soviet government to say that it was all pretty much his design and he didn't have any outside influence and it wasn't party committee. That's part of the whole communist ideology. That's why Stalin killed all the intellectuals, aka the smart people, engineers, uh, people with high degrees. It's the genius of the proletariat. It was the idea they were pushing. So it's better for you to have the only thing the Russians ever made, the, well the Soviets ever made that worked, the AK-47, to be designed by a lowly mechanic than to have come from snotty, upper-class, aristocratic Germans. I mean, Hugo Schmeiser lived on, you know, his, his family was rich, and his, you know, he came from, you know, he was a capitalist, and, you know, he was captured. We, we can't have that, comrade. We, we've got to push the agenda. So anyway, <clears throat> that's old history. I could make a whole video about that. Anyway, the idea came out of this from the Russian experience and a lot of Russian tactics. Now, the Russians had really two main infantry weapons in the Second World War, uh, the mosin nagant bolt-action rifle and a PPSH. PPSH was uh, the one you needed to know. It's the one, there's PPSH 40, 41, PPSH 43, 44. I can't remember all the models. Anyway, the important thing is, is that uh, the Russians would give just whole squads these PPSHs. The mosin nagants bolt-action rifle, and it's inexpensive to make, <clears throat> And for a while, that's all they had. But when they got more factories and they were really pushing into Europe, there was a lot less Mosins and a lot more PPSHs. And if you look at it from a Russian perspective, you've got a bunch of <clears throat> essentially peasants, low-skilled low workers who have probably never seen a gun, definitely never owned one or fired one, entering a war. What's the easiest weapon to make them, easiest to learn with, and most effective in your battlefield that you have now, which is going to be house-to-house -house fight, submachine gun. If we could all have submachine guns, we wouldn't need shot against Finner House. Submachine gun, I think, is way better. So they threw PPSHs. Whole squads had PPSH. It made sense. It was light. It had a pretty powerful round for a submachine gun. Big magazine. And uh, 
you know, anybody, any idiot could use one and it worked really well. Great submachine gun. So they equipped tons of them and, you know, they pretty much defeated the Germans in World War II with the help of uh, the Americans, of course, and the, and the English, but really the brunt of the World War II, <clears throat> as far as the German front, uh, was really fought by the Russians, who took exceptionally heavy losses, but made the Germans take a lot of losses. Now, of course, Russians like to brag about this, but then they forget that there's a whole war with Japan thing, and they weren't fighting the Japanese and the Germans at the same time, like the U.S. was and the British were, and... The French help against the Japanese and French in China? I can't remember. I know for sure the U.S. and the English uh, were fighting both the Americans and the Germans. Even the English were mostly focused on the Germans. But there was still a lot of battles with the English and the Japanese. Anyway, I'm rambling again. <clears throat> Let's get back to the topic. So, you take that idea, you take their, and you come up with what they designed the new AK-47 to be. The M16, the Air-15... That style of rifle was designed for an American Marine, American Army person, American service personnel as a rifle. He's supposed to take aim shots, one shot, one kill, as the Marines would say. You take aim shots, take fire, that's your job, aim and fire. <clears throat> Russians, whole different story. This is not of the PPSH as you get a bunch of Ivans to attack and you know, just fire a crap load of rounds at them with some relative accuracy. It's kind of like the submachine gun. You know, that's why on the Russian, on the real, let me scroll down here, real AK-47 is not these semi-automatic only uh, rifles. And you know, when you slam the receiver down, it's semi-automatic fire because you're probably panicking and you want to start shooting and the last thing that you need to be doing if you're panicking is firing on full auto a lot. So they smartly put it down to where it's semi-automatic fire. Now, if this was a real uh, full automatic AK, next up here would be full auto. So, you need to think about, do I want to put my gun on full auto? Because full auto isn't really a, a best choice in most situations. So that's why it's in the middle setting, and then, of course, safety's off. So you think, you know, well, let's get it to slam into full auto. Eh, you don't want to be going full auto while you're panicking. You're just going to end up shooting somebody you don't mean to. So there's a lot of thought in, in, in the design, but like I said, that was basically the idea for was <clears throat> swarm attacks have a lot of soldiers. So because of that, the AK set up differently. It's not accuracy, it's not its primary function. Longevity, reliability are its, are its function. <clears throat> U.S. and Western armies have a lot of trained soldiers and a lot more, we'll say educated, although some Russians can have a hissy fit. But generally, their people are, let's just be blunt, are just smarter. They have a better education. They have more exposure to machinery, uh, more, definitely more exposure to shooting and knowledge. They're not as restricted as the Soviet Union was. <clears throat> so, although I would say nowadays, with so many people living in the city who can, you know, have to buy, have to outsource somebody to open their jars for them, not as relevant, but yeah, 50s, 60s, 70s Americans, most guys could, you know, use a toolbox and do small repairs on their own. The idea was... They could service their rifles, take care of their rifles, they understood machinery. <sighs> Russians, this is probably the only machine they ever saw that, you know, the only thing that moved and had working parts on it that didn't eat hay. You know, let's be realistic. After Stalin did a lot of industrialization, you're pulling an awful lot of Asiatic Russians out of Siberia who probably never really seen a, a, a working machine other than a mill. <clears throat> so you want something idiot proof for them to use. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Idiot proof's good. Sometimes the simplest tools are the best. I was just talking to somebody about his uh, his knife sharpener, and he said his honing stone was the best sharpener he had, as well as uh, his you know his fancy dancy you know mechanical sharpener. I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the simple ones are the best. So anyway, God, I gotta kind of put it rambling on these videos. Anyway, so after that becomes the history of AK-47. Most of you guys are familiar with. Um, if you're not, pick up the book AK-47: The Grim Reaper. Found it on Amazon. Can't think of the name of the author right now. I can't look at it because it's covered up on my table here. It's a great book. Gives you the whole history and design. <clears throat> so, the whole point of this video, as I'm nearing the what six minute mark, was different configurations. Um, AK. The whole point of that was to show you AKs to sign up for short, quick fights. Now, of course, we get the gimpified semi-automatic versions, so we can't really use them as the Russians intended. It's swarm mass attack with a lot of all full automatic fire. But, you know, swarm accurate fire is still good. And, you know, as Westerners, we, we tend to take more accurate, you know, lineup targets. We sh Let's be for balance. We shoot better. You've seen the Syrian rebels. 
I don't think they know that there's sights on those guns of theirs are for aiming. I'll try and show you a video of it, but the, uh, <clears throat> especially the Free Syrian Army uh, hasn't really figured out, apart from their snipers, that those uh, little metal things up there for aiming their, uh, their guns with. <clears throat> so, that being said, um, as with the AR-15, has its problems, AK-47 has its problems. And even the most die-hard fanboy will let you know, will, would, would have to admit, at least I would think, <clears throat> <clears throat> that the sights on the AK-47 are balls. They suck. Uh, tangent sights have never been popular compared to the ghost ring sight as far as, you know, putting it in somebody's hand who's never shot before and going, hey, I like this. Um, the sights suck. Um, they're also heavier compared to the AR-15, but that was designed to be a lightweight carbine. But hey, heavy isn't always bad. Heavy things tend to be stronger, so we can't knock it. But it's just not meant to be an accurate rifle, at least comparative to the AR-15, where that was designed into the gun. This is an older style. It's meant to be reliable first, accurate, somewhere down the line. It's not to say it's an inaccurate rifle. You know, it's more, it is definitely more of a bullet hose than the AR-15 is, but it's just meant to be used differently. You need to keep that in mind. <clears throat> That's why it's ammunition is, you know, we're, we're talking, most of these are going to be AK-47s. We're talking 7.62 by 39. You know, 30 caliber round, heavier punch, much shorter range, more of a rainbow art compared to the straight shooting 5.56, which is longer. doesn't hit as hard, but it's more accurate over distance. You know, you want to chase the guy out from the cinder blocks, you shoot at him with this. Then you pick up your AR-15 and you shoot at him with that, so you actually hit him, you know. <laughs> Don't get mad. I'm just saying. That's kind of the idea. <clears throat> so anyway, that being said, um, with the AK-47 more limited in its role, um, there's not, you can't swap the tops like the AR-15, stuff like that. So it, it really can't be as flexible of a rifle. It's not a bad rifle, it just isn't designed to be as flexible. But um, it's still reliable. And reliability has its perks. Some people swear by it. Most people would admit the most reliable cars on the world are usually the Hondas and Toyotas. And Honda has the highest repeat customers. When you buy a Honda, you rarely buy another a car ever again if it's not another Honda. Same thing. <clears throat> you want to pull your trigger and you want your gun to always work. And you may not always have time to clean it. Although I would think in a fight, you, you know, after the fight, you'd probably clean your rifle when you got back. But hey, you know, if I get dropped into some shithole third world country, you know, like Somalia or Canada, you know, I, I want something like this because eh, I might not be able to get the firing pin if it breaks or <clears throat> I might not be able to get that replacement spring like on the AR-15 and uh, you know, I want something that I can, hammer, I can fix back with a hammer most of the time so there you go, it's reliable and simple and uh, those can be double-edged, the simple can be a double-edged sword but reliable is always a good thing to have. So anyway Let's say you come to me and you say, I want an AK-47, and I'm like, okay, cool, um, you know, what do you want to use it for? And you're like, well, I just, you know, I think it's a cool looking gun, and I like, you know, I like the, the history behind it, and I just want one like Mikhail Kalishnikov had. Like, Alright, well, cool, here you go, here's your standard, you know, AK, this is an underfolder. And really, if you're talking about the AK-47, this is the one I always see the most is the old underfolder type, but... You know, I've got a few nice little add-ons, Bakelite magazine, Bakelite pistol grip, did the refinish the wood myself, but you know, this is your bog standard, just as Mikhail Kalishnikov intended it, AK-47. <clears throat> Nothing wrong with running it that way if you want to, you know, if you want to have it just because you like that idea. This is where I have a problem, though. There's a lot of AK fanboys out here who think this is the only way you should ever run your AK-47, Period. You should never do anything to it. Those people are morons. Okay? Henry Ford created the modernized car with the assembly line. We don't still make Model Ts that way. Okay? AR-15 is on its what? M16, fourth, fifth configuration, probably heading into its sixth or fifth, whatever. Alright? Times change. Okay? The safety sucks. The safety system sucks. The factory triggers on AK are pretty crappy too. So this has got an American TAPCO trigger on it. <clears throat> the sights are bad. You have to reach around to charge it. It's got its problems. It's not a flawless design. It's the best gun the Russians could come up with. It's not a bad idea, but it has its limitations. People who say you should just run it as is have never shot the stupid thing outside of a dry sunny range, okay? If you're going to run it this way, but you want to use it, you want to keep it simple, at least take out this rear tangent sight and get you a nice ghost ring sight. First of all, you ain't never going to shoot your AK 
ain't never. Ugh, I live in the south too long. Thousand yards, all right, all right. Three hundred is the most you're probably ever gonna do. Maybe four hundred. Uh, after that, you're gonna be aiming at like a howitzer to shoot anything past that. So, get rid of that stupid tangent sight and at least get your rear with the ghost ring on it and improve the sights, all right. <clears throat> if you insist on running like that, I would also swap out the safety, but I'll show you what I'll swap that out for later. So anyway, that's your bog standard AK-47. Cool range toy, looks cool. A lot of good and bad guys have used one. A lot of good and bad people have died from them. But you gotta love it. Uh, like, yeah, I would compare this to my A2. You know, there's lots of times where I'm sure the A2 and this style AK 47 met. Somebody didn't go home to kiss his girlfriend or wife or boyfriend or whatever. Alright, let's move on here. So, let's see what your thing is. Alright, well, I want to put a few things on it. But I want to keep it as close to factory as possible, you know. I respect that. So I would show you something like this. This is my AK-74. And um, other than the round, it's basically the same as the 47. Fires a different round, of course. And uh has a 74 muzzle brake, but you could put that on a 47. Not this exact same one, but they make them like that. But it has these uh, really neat flip-up dot sight right there and then one you can put up on the front side here sorry I'm trying to do this while I'm looking at the camera I'm just gonna see if I can get this sucker on here with one hand there you go now instead of that god awful tangent you got this nice little double dot sight I can't really line it up with the camera but you get the idea that's much better much better than a tangents I think these glow in the dark but even if they don't they reflect light anything's better than those factory stock okay replace the uh, heavier wood with the polymer and of course this one's got a factory folding stock. Now on your uh, 47's you're a little more limited but there's lots of folding stocks. Um, this folding stock I'm a big fan of. I like this one. I like the polymer one. The Tapco one that folds I'm not a fan of. The wire ones I can't stand but that's personal preference. I just can't get a good grip on them. Um, so there's lots of different options. Don't get the Tapco one. I wouldn't get the Command R ones either. <clears throat> Get you one like this if you can. If you have to have somebody drill out your rear trunnion and put it in for you and cut the holes and stuff, that might be a bit too much. Um, but get a good folding stock if you want one. But yeah, that's the idea. It's pretty much the same gun, so it's slightly lighter, with something to help control the muzzle, better sights. Simple setup. The thing is, most people don't leave it at this point. Most people who want to do something in their AK go a little farther. I'll show you that one. All right. Now you tell me. Um, I want to use my AK-47 to defend my family, fight aliens, defend the frontier against Zur and the Conan Armada, you know, all that kind of stuff. I want to use my AK-47 on the modern battlefield, etc. <clears throat> or I want to modernize my AK. Something like that. This is more what you're going to probably find. Done correctly. Man, I've seen some people screw these up. You know, replace the stock, replace the pistol grip. The really sweet Krebs safety. Oh my god, this is so much better. I mean, it's still not as cool as the one, the Galil, that has one that's you know, a little more user friendly, but geez, it's so much easier to do this with one hand. Little optics rail with an optic. I didn't change the sights out, if that's coming, but just getting around it all together with a good optic. Polymer furniture. Of course, tactical flashlight's always a nice thing to have. This is a new mount I got trying out. So far, I like it, so I scratched the crap out of my barrel, but meh. Muzzle device to help produce some of the recoil and flash. This is more modern AK. Um, <clears throat> most people who mod them ends up being something like this because this removes a lot of the AK's problem. Tains recoil, makes it a little more ergonomic, which is a word that didn't exist in 1947 Russia or 47 America, but you get the idea. Makes it more user friendly, modernizes it a lot, fixes its primary problem, which is the opt or the uh, sights. The red dot, good red dot optic will solve a lot of the AK's problems. Uh, I wouldn't run an a, I wouldn't run an ACOG or I wouldn't really run a scope on this. If you're just putting a scope on it to take it to the range and shoot, that's cool. You know, you got especially if you got one of those spiffy side mounted Russian SVD type things. You know, and you want to shoot at it. If you got bad eyesight and you want to shoot it that way, it's cool. Uh, if you're asking me what kind of optic, I would always say a red dot. It's good for most people for 300 yards and under, which is pretty much this thing's effective range. Um, we'll get to that later if you want to shoot farther. But uh, I think this is a good setup. 
The problem is, to get to something like this, man, a lot of people do some stupid, stupid shit to their age. There's a guy on here, I'll have to see if I can find it, who's got like flip up sites and all this airsofty, cheap. Um, what's that Chinese company that makes? NC Star? Everything on here. His gun looks like it weighs 20 pounds, and he's so proud. He has this whole video with this Van Halen music. It's just, it's horrible. It, it, that's the thing, I feel so bad for it. Underneath of it is a good rifle buried under $200 of Chinese crap. And if he'd taken the same $200, he could have made something at least halfway this decent, you know. And I know all those AK purists are out there going, well, your gun's crap, too. I'm like, yeah, well, we'll take your gun in the range, we'll take my gun in the range, we'll see who shoots better. At least mine has stuff planned out. You know, this is a bit heavy, this stock, but the AK factory stock sucks, especially if you're using optics. You know, I could have just gotten any old pistol grip. I just like the Mead one for the storage space. You know, it's... You know, it's light polymer furniture, which is what the Russians use now. It's a very light, light, you know, very lightweight, uh, you know, polymer optic rail with a good old, I mean, it's not the flash on your gun, nothing. It's there if you need it, and, you know, and a nice sling. You know, it's, it's nothing too elaborate, you have to put a whole lot into it. But I think that's a pretty good setup for most people who want to modernize it. <clears throat> so, moving on. Moving on. To the strangest and least idealistic conversion of the AK. Hey, I want an AK-47. Okay, cool. What do you want to use it for? I want to make it a sniper accurized designated marksman rifle. You are looking at the wrong rifle. It's not supposed to do that. Well, I want it because it's reliable and I want a reliable one. Fine, fine, fine. Spend 35 grand, get you one of those Chinese Tiger SVDs. Spend a thousand, man, they used to be 650 and I wish I'd have bought one then. I'll get one of those Romanian PSLs. It's just like the AK gas system. And the SVD's not, but the PSL is. No, 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 no. I want an AK, but I want a sniper rifle. Okay. Well, I can't say anything because that's what I did. But that's the difference. If you insisted on having a 16 inch barreled, give or take, AK sniper rifle. You could deal with something like this, but don't because this is mine and I like mine set up and it's cute and everybody likes it. Alright, this is a Sega. This is in 308. Because if you're going to have an accurate sniper rifle in an AK, the last thing you're going to want to use is that crappy 762 by 39 round because it sucks at long range. This shoots the big super manly 308. These things come in 762 by 54R. 308. <clears throat> Hell, they come in 5.56. If you're gonna, do, if you want to do an accurate shooty sniper rifle, go get the one in 5.56. 5.45 is even decently accurate. Still not what this thing's designed for. And as you can see, I had to do a lot to it to make it do that. See, in an AR, I do stick that freaking scope on it, and maybe change like one thing, and boom, yeah, it's accurized, ready to go. This thing, uh, I did all the internet for the parts. Had to put a stock on it that was a little more accepting to an optic. Man, I had to put a whole entirely, completely different rail upper top cover on it to mount an optic correctly. I don't like the side mount optics uh, for accuracy. And uh, the rest of it is just, co you know, mostly cosmetic. But I had to modify the handguard to take a bipod, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> but still, you get an AK reliable gun, in my case, in a really powerful caliber. And my optic will let me use it as like a battle rifle and a designated marksman rifle. It's only four power, but hell, the SVD scope I think is only like three or four power when you put it on the gun. It's made for sniping dissidents at, you know, 600 yards. So there you go. If you want to configure it, go like that. I like showing this example off just because not a lot of people do it. But I guess it's a good thing because a lot of people who buy AKs aren't that dumb enough they can turn a sniper rifle. Sons of Guns, of course, is the exception. <clears throat> so anyway... I hope that helps. I've got videos on all these guns, so if you want a parts list, you can see those videos, or I guess you could shoot me a PM and I can give it to you. Um, this is the Texas Weapon Systems upper uh, top cover replacement rail. Uh, Parabellum, I think, is a company that makes one that's just like it. As far as I know, they're both really good. I really like this one. It definitely holds zero. It's pretty easy to install. <clears throat> but uh, that's your AK configurations. Like I said, Guns much more limited in AR, hence why this video is half the length. That and I didn't ramble through it most of the time. Um, you know, it's designed to do a different job. Doesn't make it better. Doesn't make it worse. 
Guns are tools, and you can use tools to do different things. A socket and a wrench are going to do the same job, just they just do it differently. Some people really like using sockets, some people really like using wrenches. Most people really like using sockets, but there's those times you really, really need a wrench. Your socket ain't going to do the job. But they're both unscrewing the bolt. Same thing with these. I would really like the AR-15 for most of the time. But there's some times, man, you can't beat an AK to do something. So, you know, is it like any tool? Have both. So, I hope this video helps. I hope this cuts down a lot of snobbery. Although I would say most of us, even if you like one AR-15 or an AK and have a preference, you probably like both. You probably own both. And uh, I've done a lot of conversions in my time. My friend Steve, you guys have seen him, shoots, loved AKs, didn't want an AR. <clears throat> I showed him, let him shoot that, uh, that brown match AR-15 of mine. Just text me today, pretty much, uh, let me uh, paraphrase here, you son of a bitch, I'm on my second bill, this is all your fault, or something like that along those lines. So, now he's, you know, convert, now he's building his own AR-15s. I think he still likes AKs better. But he's, his mind is open, and that's what this video is really to show you, is don't think of the AK as the cheap peasant rifle that doesn't hit anything, and only the commies and hipsters like it, okay? It can do a lot of stuff. It may not be AR-15 kind of flexible, but it can do a lot of stuff, and it can do it really well. So keep that in mind. You can make an AK do just about everything, and it's limitations. So, uh... I said, uh, you might have to stretch a little your definition of AK to do it, but, you know, this would definitely put the hurt on somebody just as well as an AR-15, and with the shooting 308, it may do a better job, even with a 16-inch barrel, you know what I'm saying? Your M4 isn't going to punch you that concrete barrier very well, but me and Comrade here might just get the job done, <clears throat> even if it is just a converted Sega hunting rifle. So anyway, that's it. I hope this video helped. I hope it gave you some more options. I hope you didn't fight it as rambling and long as the other one. Um, new video is coming up. I've got that scope finally mounted on my Savage Rifle, that P223 scope, which looks awesome. Um, pro tip, don't use Leopold scope rings. They use these really, they use Torx bits, which just strip. I mean, I thought Allen keys are bad, but Torx ones totally suck. And I had to order a Torx tool from Leopold to change because I didn't have Torx, but, and guess what? None of them fit. So I had to, like, just kind of jam it in the corner to get it, and then, of course, I stripped all of them, taking them out. So I had to change the things on there. So, got that coming. I got requests to shoot the Garand. I'm going to do a full thing on the air, on the LWRC. I really hope I don't take it apart again. I might just copy that video and put it on top of it. But lots of requests. People want to do it since it's now a $2,500 gun. I didn't pay that much for it. Um, and I've had it for three years. It's the gun I shoot the most. It's the gun I like the most. So I'll do a full thing on that whole thing and, and make it a big deal. I'm going to shoot the Garand pretty soon. A lot of people want to see that. Grand thumb is usually why. <laughs> Um, got my brother's Yugo coming up. We got lots of ammo for it. We got mags for it. We've got this sling mounted for it. Um, we were gonna do it, but um, personal problems. Uh, one of my cars was damaged in an accident. That was completely my fault. Luckily, only I hit was a rock, uh, so I had to go pay that insurance deposit for that. The same day, my brother had a bolt snap on his Mazda, and the uh, flywheel for the serpentine belt. Um, didn't or the uh, yeah didn't want to didn't want to go back on the car and had to drop they had to drop the engine out and fix it so you know our time money to go shooting that and then my uh, my dad his uh, his wife unfortunately died uh, so and this was all pretty much within a week so it's been a really crappy week for our family um, you know everything's pretty much been fixed his car got fixed fairly expensively mine's in the shop but I get it back in a couple of weeks. And uh, my dad is now, of course, you know, gr his grieving is over. He's moving on with his life, which is good. Uh, on the upside, though, now I can go to my dad's house and shoot because his wife didn't like us shooting guns because that's a whole different story. Uh, brother's car is getting fixed, and he's not going to be broke, so he can buy more mags and ammo and have more free time. And, uh, of course, my car is going to come back and look all shiny and new with a new paint job on it. It's still, it's still ugly looking, but at least it'll look pretty. Uh, as far as the uh, paint goes, oh. and uh, didn't only, and uh, I ended up running across an extra 400 bucks to pay the deposit out of 500. So it only cost me 100 dollars out of pocket. So things are going along really well, which is nice. Uh, which probably means something horrible is going to happen. But anyway, video is over. Thanks a lot, you guys. Shoot me any questions if you got any uh, any questions I didn't answer in this video. Any help? Anything else you want to see? I'm making a list of videos, and uh, I'll see you real soon.